Hi, today I'm going to explain a science fiction action film called The Discovery. Spoilers ahead, watch out. At the beginning of the movie, we see Professor Thomas Harbour being interviewed. He has recently proven the existence of life after death. The interviewer claims that his discovery was dangerous because ever since his work was published, the suicide rate has been skyrocketing. He dismisses the claim by saying that such a crucial truth about human life had to be brought to the people, regardless of the consequences. Thomas has been able to capture brain wavelengths on a subatomic level, leaving a person's body when they die. This explains that a person's consciousness goes somewhere when they die. But the interviewer insists that since they do not know where consciousness goes, they cannot tell for sure if the afterlife exists. Thomas tackles the claim, saying that when a train leaves the station, we know it is going somewhere. She then brings up that many celebrities, athletes, and hundreds of civilians have ended their lives because of the professor and asks him if he feels responsible for their deaths. Thomas simply answers that he doesn't. Just then, one of the camera crew stands before Thomas and thanks him for the fresh start. He shoots himself dead right after. In a similar fashion, people have been committing mass suicide to restart a new life in the afterlife. It is now the second anniversary of the discovery. Thomas's son, Will Harbour, is traveling on a ferry, listening to a TV program talking about his father's discovery. As it turns out, the suicide rate has not decreased ever since. Will turns the TV off, making it clear that he is not proud of his father's work. A girl from the other seat startles him. They are the only ones on the ferry. She introduces herself as Isla, and Will comments that her face looks familiar. The two chit-chat for a while. The conversation turns to them talking about the discovery. Isla is a supporter of it, but Will exclaims that he doesn't believe in it. Isla claims that the discovery gives people a way to get relief from the sufferings in life, but Will stays adamant about his view. After they get off the ferry, Isla hitchhikes in a car, leaving Will at the harbor. His brother Toby comes to pick him up. The two drive to a huge mansion bought by their father. Thomas has built his new station in the mansion and has employed people who survived attempted suicides. Will is confused to see labs and machinery inside the house. Thomas has been conducting some kind of experiment. Will meets his father and bluntly asks him to stop all of this. He wants Thomas to tell the media that his discovery was false and stop the chain of mass suicides. Thomas laughs at his idea and claims that his discovery was 100% true and he won't lie to anyone. As it turns out, Will was the inspiration for the discovery. When Will was young, he had an accident and died for a minute. When he was resuscitated, he had told his parents that he saw flashes and a little boy in front of him. This provided Thomas with the idea that life after death might exist. Hence, Will blames himself for the deaths and wants his father to stop. After the conversation, Will goes outside to cool his mind, but just then, he sees Isla on the beach nearby. She seems to be packing her bags with weights. Isla wears the heavy bag and goes into the sea. Will realizes she is about to commit suicide and runs to save her. He goes into the water and manages to save her, but Isla is furious. He takes her to the mansion and asks Toby to take her in, since they help people who are suicidal. Toby agrees, but she will have to go through the questionnaire first. Isla is surprised to discover Thomas is Will's father. Thomas then conducts an interview with Isla, asking her questions about her life. Meanwhile, Will goes around the house and sees that it has been fully converted into an establishment with canteens and rooms for every patient. At night, everyone gathers in a room while Thomas presents something to them. He brings out a man with a device attached to his head and claims he has figured out a way to see the afterlife. Till now, the world only knew that our brainwaves leave for somewhere after we die, but now he has figured out a way to see where the brain wavelengths go. Will and the others are shocked. Thomas explains that with the device, they can see a video recording of the afterlife. Later, everyone is at Thomas's office. He wants to be the first one to be experimented upon, but he has to be dead for that. Hence, they decide to perform it on an already dead person, which they have to steal from the morgue. On their way there, Toby reveals to Isla that their mother committed suicide, and Will blames his father for it. At the morgue, Toby distracts the keeper, allowing Will and Isla to successfully steal a corpse of a man named Phillips. That night, Will and Isla sleep on a bunk bed together. Will tells her that his mother killed herself on the day of his parents' wedding anniversary. His father was never attentive, and she was left hopeless when Thomas didn't come out of his office on their anniversary. Will had found her dead body in the bathtub the following morning. The two talk for a while and sleep while holding hands. The next day, everyone is ready to perform the experiment. 
they attach the corpse's head to the device and hit a button. While Thomas waits for something to show on the monitor, nothing happens. They do it repeatedly, but to no avail. A disappointed Thomas leaves the room and everyone else follows. However, when Will is alone inside, the monitor starts working and shows a clip of Phillips meeting a woman at a hospital. Will quickly turns it off before Thomas comes in again. They have to let Phillips' body go for cremation, and Thomas asks Toby for a new corpse. Will and Isla take the corpse back to the morgue and leave it on the ground outside. All of a sudden, Isla kisses Will. The two are awkward later and do not talk on the ride home. Will cannot get the thought of the video out of his head. He has downloaded it to his laptop. After some research on the internet, he finds the hospital in the video. Will drives to the hospital and walks through the passage Phillips had walked. However, he reaches a dead end that was not in the video. A janitor informs him that there used to be a passage before the hospital was renovated a decade ago. Will realizes that the video could not have been from the future. He predicts it to be Philip's memories displaying on the monitor. Later, everyone gathers at the mansion for a session when Thomas calls a patient named Lacey to the stage. Lacey has been speaking against the discovery and Thomas's new invention, claiming that it will cause more mass suicides. Thomas confronts her in front of everyone. As it turns out, he had found Lacey in the woods ready to kill herself and had saved her. In the end, he asks her to pack her bag and leave the establishment. Will is furious at Thomas for embarrassing Lacey, but Thomas dismisses the matter. Later, Will shows Isla Phillips' video. The two go to the same hospital to investigate Phillips' case together. They find Phillips' father's file with his address on it. They believe that in the video, Phillips was visiting his father on his deathbed, and the woman he met was probably a relative. Later that night, Will has a chat with Toby, who tells him that Thomas has been working on this machine for their mother. Thomas is guilt-ridden because of his wife's death and wants to know she went to a better place. The following day, Will and Isla go to the beach, where Isla tells him that her five-year-old son had died by drowning at a beach because she fell asleep. That was the reason she wanted to die before Will saved her. The two then go to Phillips' house and meet his sister, who happens to be the woman from the video. She informs them that Phillips never came to meet her father at the hospital. None of his family likes him, as he had been awful to them. Will has noticed a tattoo of a lighthouse on Phillips' arm in the video, but the woman tells him that he had a wave tattoo instead. Will realizes the video is not Philip's memory, but rather, his afterlife. Phillips has gone back in time to correct his mistakes in life after his death. As it turns out, in the afterlife, people relive an alternate version of their life and get a second chance to make different choices. Will and Isla are surprised by the discovery. They are in their room when suddenly, Toby barges in and calls them to see Thomas. Thomas has attached himself to the device to try to figure out the machine. He has suffocated himself and is on the verge of death. The monitor starts working again. This time, it shows Thomas on the night of his wife's death. It was their anniversary. He had not come out of his office that day, but in the video, he tells his wife that work can wait and has dinner with her. He had been given a chance to correct his mistake, and he did. Right after watching the video, they unplug the machine and bring Thomas back to life by electrocuting him with a defibrillator. Thomas is shocked and delighted to see his device work. It turns out that when a person dies, he goes back to a time in his life that he regrets the most and gets a second chance to make different choices. He gathers everyone in the house in the front yard and is about to tell them about the invention when suddenly a gunshot is heard. Lacey, who has been kicked out of the mansion, has shot Isla. She claims that she didn't kill her, just gave her a new beginning before being taken away by Toby. Isla falls to the ground and tells Will that she doesn't want to die anymore. Will is devastated when she takes her last breath in his arms. Sometime later, we see Toby and Thomas talk about Isla's family for a police report. Thomas decides to destroy the machine after seeing the impact it has on people. But when Thomas tries going inside his lab, he discovers that it is locked from the inside. Will locks himself in and attaches himself to the device. He suffocates himself, and when he is on the verge of death, Will finds himself in a memory of himself back on the ferry. Will meets Isla again and asks her what is going on. Isla reveals that this is a memory because Will is connected to the machine and is not dead. Isla here is his own subconscious. In the memory, Isla reveals that he has been living this part in loops in multiple lives. The two first met on the same ferry many lives ago. But in that scenario, Will didn't see Isla trying to commit suicide and couldn't save her. When he read about her death the following day, he was filled with guilt because he knows he could have done something on the ferry. He went on living his life, but the guilt always remained with him.
Eventually, when he died, he was brought back to the ferry where he met Isla again because he regretted this moment the most in his life. However, Will couldn't save her, even then. In a similar way, Will has been stuck in this loop and lived his life hundreds of times trying to save Isla, but he'd never been successful until his most recent life. Will has met her numerous times, so a part of his consciousness remembers her. That is why Isla looked familiar to him when they first met. Isla tells him that since he has been able to stop Isla from committing suicide in this life, he has made peace with his consciousness and has no regrets now. Also because of that, he would now end up somewhere else in his next life and not on the ferry. Will promises that in his next life, he will remember Isla. Just then, he begins to hear the voices of Thomas and Toby. They are trying to jumpstart his heart, but their attempt is unsuccessful and Will dies. After he dies, his afterlife takes him back to a beach. Will sees a little boy is alone playing in the water. He takes him out, making sure the kid doesn't drown. Just then, Isla comes running to them and we see that the kid is Isla's son. Will now has been sent to save him. Isla thanks him and walks away with her son. Neither of them recognize the other. As Will walks away, he turns around with a confused look on his face, suggesting that he is starting to remember Isla. The movie ends, but we can imagine that Will perhaps asks Isla out for coffee or something like that afterwards.